Well, Canada's Pipestone Creek bone bed is home to thousands of dinosaur fossils and scientists are looking into how they got there. Dr. Emily Bamford is a curator at the Philip J. Curie Dinosaur Museum who is researching exactly what happened there millions of years ago. And she joins me now from the town of Wembley in Alberta. Emily, good to have you with us. Now, firstly, can you give us a bit of background about Pipestone Creek and why uh, there are so many dinosaur bones and fossils found there over the past uh, few decades? So Pipestone Creek is a, a very unique fossil site. Uh, it's a site that contains hundreds or thousands of dinosaurs of a particular species called Pachyrhinosaurus. And we believe that this was one herd of dinosaurs that got killed in a catastrophic event. And so it's unique in the world for its density. So we're looking at something like 100 to 300 bones per square meter. And the bone bed extends for about a square kilometer. So it is an absolutely huge dinosaur bone bed. And again, unique in the world. Yes, uh, you, uh, Pachy rhinosaurus, uh, do they have modern day and, um, descendants? No, so Pachy rhinosaurus are some of the horned dinosaurs. So you can think of them as smaller, older cousins of the Triceratops. They actually went extinct uh, prior to the dinosaur mass extinction. Um, so they have no modern ancestors. So everything we know about them comes from the fossil record. So how did this area then earn its nickname, the River of Death? So the River of Death moniker is a reference to the fact that we believe these animals potentially died in a catastrophic flooding event. So we believe that this was a herd of migratory animals on a seasonal migration that got wiped out by potentially some kind of, of big flood. Um, so back in the Cretaceous period, this would have been about 72 million years ago, this particular area of Canada um, would have been prone to flooding. So we were right on the edge of an inland sea at the time uh, with the mountains to the west of us and the seaway to the east. And so this was kind of a coastal lowland. So things like monsoons and hurricanes were, like, were likely. Um, any kind of weather event in the mountains that caused a lot of rain would have washed down into this coastal plain. So we believe that this was an area that was prone to that kind of flooding. Um, and these animals just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. From their perspective, I mean, it was great for us because now we have the bone bed. Yeah, of course. And, and, and um, what sort of work is being done to sort of prove that theory? So there's a lot of work that's being done at the Pipestone Creek bone bed. It is a very active site. Um, so myself and my team were out there every single summer um, excavating at the bone bed. We collect somewhere between five and 700 fossils every year. And in addition to collecting those fossils, we are also studying the bone bed itself in terms of um, some of the, the, the sedimentary features, trying to figure out what exactly happened to these animals. Um, and so every single year we go back, every single year we discover new things, um, including understanding how the animals died and how the bone bed itself formed. Yes. Can you give us a, a bit of an idea when you do go on the ground, beside, you know, besides just the digging, what else is it that you guys do physically when you are there uh, to ensure that you, know, you do find uh, the fossils and the bones you're looking for? So the Pipestone Creek bone bed is a, we call it a very reliable site. Um, the, the bone, it's the bone bed itself is, it's kind of like a flat horizon of bone. Um, and it's underneath a very, very hard rock that we call cap rock. Um, so the cap rock, we have to get off with sledgehammers, pickaxes, rock saws, things like that. Um, so that's the first first thing we do in the summer is, is peeling up kind of sections of this cap rock and then we work uh, at the fossil layer underneath it. So it is actually, it's a very physical job to start with. Um, and then again, we work throughout the summer. Uh, by the time we have bones isolated, we're, we're jacketing them up, um, collecting them, and we bring them back to our museum in Wembley, which is where they get prepared, um, stored, curated, and then potentially go on exhibit or go out for research. Yes, and we are seeing pictures of all the hard work that you've been doing. Now, can you tell us what are some of the, the major prehistoric discoveries that have been made at Pipestone Creek? So the, I guess the most obvious one is that this is an endemic species. So the, the animal, the species that's in the bone bed, it was a new species when it was discovered. Um, the other kind of thing that makes paleontology or makes the paleontology of the bone bed really special is that this is a, a herd of animals. So we have babies and juveniles and subadults. We have the, the whole age range um, of animals preserved. Um, so we can understand things like dinosaur growth, like sort of what they look like when they're babies and what they look like when they're adults and how they get there. Um, we can also study things like community structure, um, parental care in these animals. These are things that we often cannot study in dinosaurs because for the most part, 
Um, dinosaurs are often found as isolated individuals or maybe one or two, but to find a big bone bed that has hundreds or thousands um, from a single herd allows us to study aspects of dinosaur biology that often can't be, be explored. Yes, and then finally, Emily, I mean, this all begs the question, you know, what else is out there at least at Pipestone Creek? Does that question excite you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so this area of, of Alberta is kind of less well studied than other, other places in the province. And so this is kind of um, the paleontology frontier, um, at least in terms of Albertan paleontology. Um, so we're really excited about the potential at Pipestone Creek. Um, as well as the surrounding area as well, because we've started to make many other fossil discoveries in this region as well. Okay, uh, Dr. Emily Bamford, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you about the land before time. Thank you. Yes, thank you.